Good morning and welcome back. Gets a little chaotic as you get towards Christmas. I apologize for the mess in here, but it's been a little nuts. I want to take a few minutes out today, go into Lightburn and identify a few of the things that most of you are going to encounter at some point if you haven't already. I'll give you a few tips, things that I've learned that's helped me out, especially if you buy a lot of your design files off the internet. So let's get into Lightburn and I'll go through them with you one at a time today on LaserNug. The first tip I have about Lightburn and your laser is right here. You'll see that it says disconnected. Lightburn is open, my laser is on and running, but it doesn't say ready here. And that's because when you first open Lightburn, Lightburn will immediately go out on your network and try to find your laser. But a lot of times if you're like me, you spend time in Lightburn creating a design, getting it ready before you go to the laser and turn it on. Lightburn doesn't constantly go out and cycle looking for your laser. So if you found yourself in this position where the laser's turned on, Lightburn is open and you've got disconnected here, you wanna make sure you're on your correct laser, which I am, the Nova, and you come to this button called Devices, take your mouse and right click that button. You'll see now it's asked Lightburn to go back out and find the laser. It has found it, now you're ready to go. One of the most helpful features in Lightburn I found is this preview window up here. I never send a file to the laser anymore without doing a preview. The reason for that is that preview is going to tell you whether or not the file is exactly the way you intended it to be before you send it to the laser and cut material. If you don't use this preview window every time before you send a file, that's when you'll run into some trouble. For example, you may have forgotten to group everything you needed to group because there are little bits that are missed. You send it to the laser, it comes out and you're missing components. And it's most likely, like myself, it's because I didn't group it properly. For example, the cut, the layers that are supposed to be cut layers are cut layers and my engraved layers are coming out as engraves. But it also finds errors with your files. And if you're buying files off the internet, you're going to find this happens maybe not on every file, but quite often. This is the file that I took right off the internet. I haven't changed it or done anything to it. If I group that and I send it to the laser, there's gonna be a problem. If you preview it first, it's gonna tell you there's a problem before you send it to the laser. You'll see here it says, several shapes were duplicated on the same layer and likely not intended. And it gives you the choice. You can continue to send it to the laser or you can ask it to show you what was wrong. So I click show me and you'll see it appears the score layer here has been duplicated. So I'm gonna delete that because I don't want the laser going back through cutting more than once. Now that I've deleted it, I'm gonna group it and take a look again. And now you'll see my design is ready to go the error has been corrected and now it's ready to go, everything's in good shape. The second thing that happens to me regularly when I buy files is I have node issues. In other words, open or incomplete nodes. And what that means is whoever created the file didn't close a shape. In other words, if they drew a circle, they didn't complete the circle. In other words, the starting point and the ending point did not come out in the exact same spot. So if you take a look at this part of the design, I have a cut layer and I have an engraved layer. If I don't preview this and I send it, there's gonna be an error or a problem with the engrave or the file. If I preview it first, you'll see Lightburn says, there's a shape that was set to fill, but it wasn't closed. That means the nodes were not closed. So I can continue or I can ask it to show me where's the error in this design file. And sure enough, there it is it appears the error is on this engraved, this star. So I know there's a problem. To the naked eye, it looks like everything's fine. But this is why at some point you're going to need to learn nodes. And I'm still working on it and getting better at it because there's a lot of commands in nodes. But if I come over here to the left side and I click nodes and I zoom in, what I'm trying to find is an open node. In other words, a space that wasn't properly closed. And if I look around, I can see right here, 
that whoever created this file did not close this node. See that gap there? This is an engrave layer, which means the laser can't engrave it because it's not closed. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drag them over and you'll see that turned red on me. I believe I've got it closed now. So I'm going to come back out of nodes and I'm going to grab my shape and I'm going to check the preview again. And sure enough, that was the problem. I've closed the node. Everything's set to go. I'm going to get my engrave where I need it and my cut where I need it. Those are primarily the two main problems that I run into with files that I buy off the internet. So at some point when you have time, it's a great idea to start learning how to use nodes. And what I've done myself is I just grab a file, I'll click on nodes, and I'll just start breaking it up and making mistakes and trying to twist and turn and recreate nodes or add nodes, smooth nodes. I'll break nodes and change the shape and then try to practice how to put them back together. And the more that you keep practicing it, like anything, the better you get at identifying them, finding the nodes and fixing the actual problem, whether there's a break or a missing node, or as was in the first example, you've got extra lines or extra duplicated components in that design that were not intended to be there. Let's talk about text. So here's just some sample text here. And especially when you're working on things like Christmas decorations or ornaments, text is usually really tiny because you're working with three and a half to five inches of space and some portion of that ornament. If you're engraving, not a problem because you can pretty much engrave anything no matter how tiny the font is. But in the case where you decided you want to cut out these letters and then glue them to the surface of that ornament, the font is going to be really, really tiny, which means things like these dots on top of the eye are going to be like a millimeter or two millimeters in size. And that poses two issues for you. One, it's super tiny, so you're probably using a tweezers to put it on. And secondly, you have very minimal surface area for any type of glue or 3M to create a proper bond against the material below it. And if you're using glue, now you're stuck with a daub of glue that's most likely going to, in some cases, squish out the sides. So a couple of things I've learned to do if I want to stick this on in a different color and it's on something that's really small so the font is really tiny. I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to convert to a path. Now each of my letters is individual. And I'm going to take letters such as the eye with this dot. And I'm going to grab the dot on my eye. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to get it to overlap just slightly on top of the, the bottom of the eye. I'm going to press and hold shift, highlight the bottom of the eye. I'm going to come over to my Boolean command and I'm going to use my union. And now what I've done is I've removed that tiny little dot that I'm going to have a hard time trying to put on my ornament and I've created one character. That way when I cut it out, I don't have to worry about that tiny little dot. And I'll do the same thing with the other two eyes. The other thing that's very helpful when you're cutting this out on something really small, and we'll just grab this guy here as a second example, is that I go in here to my H space, and what I want to do is squeeze my letters together until they touch and overlap. And you'll see what happens automatically. When I start to squeeze these together, you'll notice the letters will start touching and they automatically weld together. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to give me larger shapes to glue onto the top of my decoration. Instead of having every single tiny letter, especially in a small font, separated and I have to struggle to get them to, to stick, I've now created a larger volumetric area that's going to get cut out and will be much easier to stick and to line up on top of that ornament. A couple of last things which you may find helpful. When you're working with a lot of files and a number of pieces, you may find sometimes that there's an extra layer. In this case, it's my teal layer. I have no idea where that layer is because I didn't use teal. I only have five layers that I put into these various different pieces or components. So I need to find where that teal is because 
even with my glasses on, I can't see a difference in the color. And that's probably a matter of age. But if you're finding you've got extra layers or you've got colors and you don't know where they are in the mass of that design, press and hold your shift button, click on the layer, and you'll see Lightburn will identify every component on that workspace that's using that color. And here, sure enough, whoever created these files used a different color on this particular uh, file design. And since I'm not using that, I know I don't need it. It should have been blue like the rest of them, but this is how I caught the error. Lastly, you'll notice here I've got two different pieces of material. I'm using True Flat and I'm also using a mirrored acrylic. And you'll see there's two sets of colors, one for acrylic, one for my True Flat. However, notice the order of my layers. I always fill first or engrave. I have a score line here, so I always score next. And the last thing I ever do on my material is I cut it. And so after I've created the layers, I'll go through here and I'm gonna use these up and down arrows to make sure that I have them in that order every time. You definitely don't wanna cut something first and then try to engrave it because that piece is gonna cut out and then possibly move or shift, in which case it's gonna throw off your autofocus as well as the fact that you're gonna be engraving perhaps on an angle or something that's not parallel or perpendicular. So hey, I hope those tips are gonna be helpful for you as Christmas approaches. Sorry, I haven't had a lot of videos out lately, but it's like yourself, there's just a lot going on. But I wish you folks all the best. I hope those have been helpful tips. And by all means, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Have a great week, have fun with your laser, and I'll see you again on the next one. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.